So today we'll be discussing about uh, chapter nine of the book, which is about uh, plotting and visualizations. And for the learning objective uh, for this chapter is like we'll be looking at basic uh, data visualization techniques, uh, the packages in which uh, we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be looking at uh, Matplotlib, we'll be looking at uh, Pandas, and also we we'll look also we'll be looking at uh, a Seaborn library all in Python. So the book starts uh, with a brief uh, introduction where they talk about uh, some brief uh, motivation about the chapter that in every uh, analysis process that is always better, uh, we do some kind of exploratory analysis, do some visualization because uh, visualization, it can show us a little insight about uh, the data they start uh, with that uh, brief uh, motivation. So for today, the libraries uh, which we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be looking at, uh, as I said earlier, we'll be looking at the matplotlib. So we, first of all, we need to import uh, the library. So we said import matplotlib, the pyplot as PLT because the matplotlib is just about mathematics, plotting, and also the library. Then we'll also be looking at uh, NumPy. So I need to import NumPy as MP and also import uh, Seaborn as SNS. So for the data sets, I just from the NumPy, I just create a MPR range of 10, a 10 random number, then I assign that to a data. So when I run this, when I run this, oh sorry, I've not imported the library. So I have to import the libraries. Okay, so when I run this, we see that actually that is an array starting from index zero up to index uh, nine. So, and the book also starts with this a brief examples in which they did in the book. They use the plt dot plot function from the from the matplotlib library, then just pass in. Uh, the data set in also when we run that line is going to just show us a, a brief a line graph. So once we run that line is going to show us this is going to show us the address location of the plot. Because when I first started going through the chapter, I was like looking as where is my plot. Uh, so for us to be able to uh, for us to be able to see this plot, we need to use uh, this function, the plt, plt.show. But the book also, they have some recommendation that if you are using the Jupyter notebook, that we need to use the dollar, uh, the dollar, uh, the percent matplotlib notebook. Then if we are using the IPython, then we need to use percent matplotlib to display the plot. So for in order for me to be able to display this plot, what I'll just do in my console, I'll just say plt.show to show the plot in my plotting in my my plotting window in R Studio. So when I run this, when I run this that line, let me zoom so that so when I run that line, I was able I will be able to see that actually it's a line plot, and we can see. Is actually the line plot in which uh, we pass in. So in the next demo, in the next demo, they talk about uh, customization of the visualization. It's just like he said, like uh, the Seaborn pandas is built upon plotting function that in order for us to use, in order for us to customize uh, the plot, uh, the book recommend that we need to learn, we need to study more about uh, the, uh, the, we need to study more about uh, Matplotlib API. We need to go in depth to study the API about Matplotlib in order for us to know uh, the brief on how we can customize uh, the plot. So in this other chunk here in which, in this other chunk, he said, the book they do discuss that every plot in which we create, every plot in which we create, they always uh, reside in the in the 
every plot in which we create, they always uh, reside in this uh, in the figure. Every plot we that we create using uh, the uh, the bad plot leaf is always reside in the figure in the in the figure. That is where we can uh, get us as have access to the plot. So when we create run this line, we have we have created a new object called fig. So in order for me to know what I have created there is just say plt. I run my plt dot show. So when I create a plt dot show, it's just a blank canvas. It's going to show that it's just a blank canvas because I have not passed in any data sets to visualize. plt dot show. So the next step is for us to add the further subplot components. We need to add the subplot plot components uh, to the visualization by using the fig.add subplot. So here we say the dimension is going to be two by two. So it's going to have, the plot is going to have two rows and two columns. And the index position one means is that we are selecting the first plot. So when we run that line, when we run that line showing subplot text one, argument axis one, what's, I don't understand, type error subplot text one or three positional argument or two we are giving. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, you can put comma there. Yes. Yeah. It was two comma two, yeah. So when we run that, it has created the plot. We can see the address. So if I just call the plot dot show again and I run, it actually shows that this is the plot in which I create the first plot because I said the index position one that I want to get the first plot. So that is the first plot we just display. So when we go further down, we can still use the subplots. We can add more subplots. Here we are adding the fig.add subplots. We are selecting the second plot and we are storing this in the in, on a, in a new object called axis two. Then the third one here, we select the third plot. We are saving that in, the new object called axis three. So when I run uh, this line, then I do plc.show. I think it's going to give us uh, three plots, same window, yeah. So this was the first plot. This is now the second plot. And this is now the third plot in which I just uh, display. So yeah. Um, so the first and second value in the subplot, um, what do they signify? The first and second value, I think, uh, from is the rows and the column. Okay. So the dimension, yes, the dimension. That is the plot dimension, the, the rows and the column. Then the third value is the position. I, the, if if it is two, it means that we are selecting yeah. the second. Okay. Yes. Column. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So the third we are is adding axis method to the plot, okay. So here we are still using our plt.figure because I said any figure we create uh, in matplotlib, every plot, they always reside within the figure. Then we save this in the figure argument. Then we are adding a subplot, which is as the dimension two of two by two. And we are selecting the first item. This other one has also the dimension of two by two. We are selecting the second item. And in the third item, this one, we are selecting the third item. Then from the third item, I want to add a plot. I want to plot a, a line plot on the third item. So I just say AX3, which is the axis three, the third axis, then the plot, then MP, the random standard. I create a I use a numpy to generate a standard number of 50. Then I look for the cumulative sum. Then we select the color of the line be black. Then the line type should be what dashed. So when, when I should run that chunk, 
it has created a new plotting object. So I want to view that plotting object. So I just say plt.show. So when I do plt.show, so it's going to show the plots, the third plots in the third plotting window because in the axis three, I said you should do a brief scatter plot using pandas. Um, I have a question. Number one okay. is about Quattro. Can't we have those images in Quattro just to display within this document? Um, yes, I have my Quattro. I have run my Quattro, but I find it hard presenting with Quattro. But I, let me share it. No, 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 no. It's okay. Just um, no. I just I don't want to just ask it. So it's okay. Um, that another thing that I was thinking like so um, uh, this thing also looks like layered graphic like ggplot where we yes. have like a, we define add layer add one on top so they they looks like layered um somehow similar to ggplot right it's similar but i think ggplot i really love the syntax of ggplot because ggplot is more clear because we we, we yeah, are starting yeah, yeah. from of course, of course yeah <laughs> okay thank you Okay, so I think, uh, as I said earlier, that every plot, we always save it in the, in the, it always outputs the address. So for us to view that plot, we need to use the plt.show function in order for us to view the plot. So in this other chunk, what I was trying to do here, okay, is just in the first axis, I want to plot an a histogram. Why in the second axis, I want to output a scatter plot. So then I say, let the beans be 20, let the color be black, then alpha, which helps to control the transparency of the plot. I said it should be 0 0.3. Then in this other line, this, this is to output uh, the scatter plot, that is axis two dot scatter. It's going to plot a scatter plot in the axis two. So when we should run that chunk, it shows that, so I'll just check the outputs, plt.show. Yeah, so axis two is a scatter plot, axis one is histogram, then axis three still remains as our default line graph that we got. So in this other word, it says to make a grid of subplot more common, map plot includes plot subplots, PLT does subplots, that is to add subplots to the plot. And in this subplots, uh, the dimension of this is two by three. So when we run this, I think, PLT dot show, uh, PLT dot show, yeah. Because the dimension is two by three. So it's going to have two rows and what, three columns. So which is six, total of six. That is where we have there. So this, I got this from a, the uh, matplotlib documentation. I think this one is just a brief style. We use plt.style.use. We are using uh, this style to style the final output of the plot. Then we, only, we set a random seed of three. Then in the X axis, we just use, we generate a random number for both the X and the y axis, then, then we do our plot, which is ax dot scatter to plot uh, the scatter plot. The plot. in the plots, they did some customization for the they set the axis limit and also they set the axis six mark. Then they use the plt dot show to display uh, the plot. So when we should do run that, it's not showing. So we run. It just shows that it's a brief scatter plots. But I don't know how why our studio is not showing the, the X axis and the Y axis limit uh, clear. I don't know if somebody have suggestion why is our studio not outputting the, the axis? Because can I you, can't see can you export the 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 export click as well let's see whether it can show no, in the Quarto document, it will show us, but in the house studio ah. ID, yeah, it's not showing. Oh, okay. That's... In, the, in, in the output in Quarto, it will show, but in 
in the ID, S to the ID, it will not show the axis, the, the number values that are there. That might be just an, uh, an IDE, like a, something in the viewer itself that's reading it differently. Because if it shows up in the, in the court though, the published document, then I don't think you're doing anything wrong. You can try um, using, I think it's dev.new as a function, and then that'll open up a new graphics window. And then okay. you can try it, and then it should open up on a new window that's not limited to the IDE's restraints. Dev.view. N-E-W. D-E-V dot N-E-W. Just put it in the chats. Okay. Okay, okay. It's not. Do you have a GR devices installed? Yes, yes. That it uses. I don't know if it works with um, Python plots, maybe. I have graphic graphic device. Yes, I have graphic device on my system. Yes. I wonder if it doesn't work in Corto documents. I don't know. I just tried it, and it just gave me null in my R Studio. I don't know. I that's what I usually do if I'm working in a just an R script, and I want to see the full plot. Um, but it might not work here. Maybe I will just go ahead. So this is going to be the output of the plots. I think this 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 other one we are, we are still using the style plot dot style dot use then. We are using axis dot bar, which is going to plot, which is going to plot uh, the bar plots. So if I do run the chunk, if I do run the chunk, then I view the plots. It's going to just show us uh, the bar plots. But in Quarto, it's it will render the document in full. We'll be able to see. Uh, this for box plots. This box plot, we are just still styling the plots. Then we create a, a random seed. Then we use NumPy to generate our random number for the plotting. Then for the axis, we have you use plots.subplots to customize. We store everything within the figure. Uh, figure. Then we say axis dot box plot. Then the position we are using two index of two, four, and six. Then the width. Of the box plot, we set it uh, to 1.5. Then for the means, we say we don't show that show means to be false. Then we do not need the, uh, the whiskers should be colored by this CO, I, which I don't know what. Uh, if I can see. Which I don't know. It's not there, not found. So let's just proceed. So if we run this, so it's going to display uh, the box plots. This other one, okay, we can learn more with the matplotlib documentation where we can also specify further arguments to customize the plots end row, which for the number of rows in the subplots, the end call, which refers to the to the number of uh, number of columns uh, in the subplot. Then the if we want, uh, if we are having a subplot within our plot, if we want the x axis uh, to share uh, the same axis uh, tick, so we can say the share x, we can set it uh, to be true. But if we want this the y axis to share to share the same axis stick, so we can say share uh, share y. We can set uh, that to be true. Subplot dot kw. That is the dictionary of keyword pass to the to add subplots. So we can 
we can we can all add all these further arguments. I think there is still a link uh, in the Matplotlib uh, documentation. I don't know if up till this point there are questions before I proceed. Okay, so we can ad adjust in the spacing around the subplot. So for the spacing around the subplots, there are some other arguments uh, uh, in which uh, in which uh, they specify we can set uh, the left to be non. We can bottom is always non, which is the default right non, top non. Then the the width of the that is the width of the plots is always non. The height, which is also so set uh, to be known, but we can further customize this to improve uh, the look of our data uh, visualization. So in this example here, they, they did a for loop, which they, for the range, for I in range two and for J in range two. So the axis, the index, the position I, and also uh, the position J. So what they are simply plotting is a histogram. They want to create, use a loop to create several histograms. So they are storing everything within uh, the, the axis. So when we run the loop, so we say plt, plt dot show, plt dot show. Okay, it shows that this is the first value we created, this is the second value, this is the third value, and this is the fourth, because we have already set the dimension of the plot should be what, two by two. So we are going to get four plots at the, as the output. And we, have, we, we also specify in the plot, in the function that the x-axis, the, the, all the plots should share the same x-axis where we say share x, we set it to be true. And we say the y-axis that should share uh, the same uh, axis sticks because we set the share y to be what true. So it's going to share the same axis sticks uh, in the y axis. This is saying color markers and line style. So the same matplotly line plot function as same arrays of x and y uh, coordinates and optional color styling option. For example, plot x versus y. So in this example here, we are simply saying, we are still using fig.add subplots to add subplots to our visualization. So in the axis.plots, then we, we are creating a random number and we look for the cumulative sum of that number. Then we set uh, the color uh, to be black. Then the line style should be back, dashed. Then the marker, which we set to be zero. So that means if I run the visualization, it's going to be, uh, it's going to put the points on that plot. It's going to plot the points at saying plots.show. Yeah, it's going to put the points at their respective, because that is what uh, the marker equal within string we put as uh, zero. Okay, for here, the, in the book, they were discussing about uh, the draw scale uh, option because they said the line plots, you will notice that subsequent plots are linearly interpolated on, on each other. And for we to be able to overcome that, they do recommend we should use uh, the draw scale, draw style option. So we need to set uh, the draw, the draw style where we need to step the draw style, which is step post, and also set the label to be what step post to 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 improve that. I think uh, yeah. So we say plt plt dot show plt dot show. So which shows us the default plots and also the default, which is 
the initial one in which we plotted and also the step posts and it place the because what the ax dot legend is doing is placing the legend there where we can compare between the default and also the step posts. What is this again? Okay, six labels and legends. So for us to set the ticks, labels, and legend, we need to pass in some other arguments into the plot, which is the X limits. We, within the X limits, we can specify the limits and also uh, the ticks within the plot. So for us to do that, I think I have an example. OK. I say call with no argument returns the current parameter value, returns the current X. Most kind of plot can be assessed through method. I think I missed something here. I missed something here. So I'll just proceed setting the title X label ticks and tick labels. So this we are creating our PLT or subplots to create a subplot in our plotting window. Then we use the ax.plots. Then we are generating our the same random number. Then we look the plot.show to show the visualization. Plot.show, it shows us uh, the visualization because which is a cumulative sum of 1,000. If you check, it must be not be above 1,000. So here for us to add the legend into the plots, we just need to just add this line, ax.legend to add, to show uh, the legend on the plot. ax.legend, the same plot, we, we are still using the same function. So we just add the last line there to display uh, the legend on the plots. plt dot show. Yeah, so this one, the first, which is one, because the label there is one. For the second plot, uh, we label it as two. For the third plot in which we are creating with the num, uh, the, we label it as three. So it will just output, uh, it will just place uh, the legend there. But I find it uh, to be very uh, challenging because in, because in ggplot, uh, it's very easy for me to really manipulate uh, this uh, plot and the syntax because I don't need to just, I don't need to pass this other argument again in ggplot. Once I feel ggplot will uh, automatically is going to place uh, the legend and the customization. It looks, uh, it looks more intuitive and more easier for, for me to play around uh, this visualization in in ggplot than what I found uh, in the matplot uh, lib library. I found ggplot to be more uh, so powerful here. So in this order, we, we chunk is about saving the plot. So we can save this plot. There are several outputs formats in which we can save the plot. We can also specify uh, the resolution, which has to be the DPI, which we can use 400, we can even go less than 400. We can also specify the file parts for where we want to save this file, maybe as a string. Then we can also specify other arguments like the face color, the edge color, the format can either be PNG, it can be PDF, it can be SVG, it can be PS. So there are several output formats in which uh, we can save uh, our visualization. So the book also talk about matplotlib uh, configurations. It's also talk about the configurations uh, for matplot that matplotlib comes uh, configured with color schemes and the defaults that are geared towards preparing figures for publication. Fortunately, nearly all of the defaults there. Yeah, Nearly all of the default governing figure size, subplot, spacing, color, fonts, grid, and style, and so on. One way to modify uh, to modify this is through this uh, RC 
RC methods. So, so it's through this RC method in which uh, we can use uh, to configure uh, to whatever uh, configuration in which we set in that file, whatever configuration in which we set each time uh, in which uh, each time in which uh, we are loading, we are using uh, that library. So we, are, we always have access uh, to that uh, configuration. So let me go back. Okay, so here yeah, in this example here, we just say plt, which is our plot.rc. Then here we set the font should be font. Then the family of the should be monospace. The weight should be bold. And we can say the font size should be eight. Here, this other example is for the plt.rc. Then which we call the figure, the figure size should be the dimension should be 10 by 10. So we can use that, pass in those arguments uh, to further uh, customize uh, the, the look of our uh, visualization using uh, the matplotlib. So this other example here, we'll be looking at examples of plotting with the pandas and the Seaborn uh, library in Python. So the first one in which I'll be looking at is that uh, we, I first of all create use uh, the NumPy to generate my, stand, my normal, standard uh, normal. Then I just use the s.plot uh, function. We just plot. So when I plot that uh, plt.show again, to see what is there. Oh, uh, what is Dre? Why is it not showing? I think I have to switch to the notes. Yeah, I think I am here. So this was the example I was trying to explain. So when I run the PD dot series, so I create a, a random number of 10, then I look for the cumulative. So when I say the index, then we just run the S dot plot function. So to generate uh, the plots. But in, in Quato, the output is not looking that is why I said I prefer working with our studio it becomes challenging to be scrolling. So it will just show us uh, the plot, which is a line graph. So, so there are some, uh, the book, they also talk about uh, some other, uh, some other series, some other customization in which uh, we can pass, we can pass in the label the label to label for, for plot legends. So we can also look look at the, the alpha, which controls uh, the, uh, the transparency of the plots, which ranges from zero to one. Then within the kind, within the kind, we specify the kind of plot in which we want to visualize. If it's, is it an area? Is it a bar? Is it, and this bar is going to be vertical, bar H, which is going to be horizontal bar plot. Is it a density plot? Is it a histogram? Is it, is it a kernel density estimate? Is it a line plot? Is it a pie? Is it a line? So we also pass in the figure size. The, we, we can also put, put the x-axis on a log scale, the y-axis on the log scale, uh, the title. The, there are some other more customization in which uh, we can pass uh, to the plots to improve uh, the visualization. So this other example is talking about uh, the line graph we are still using the pandas, which is pd.dataframe. Then the index, which is from zero to 100 by, by 10. Then the plot style, it should be on a grayscale. So we say df.plot, df.plot, which is coming uh, from the pandas. So when we run that, it's going to give us uh, this uh, line graph.
So for bar plots, it's still the same, the same steps, it's still the same process. So we just need to pass in the index, which is a list, then data.plots.bar h, this is going to be horizontal bar plots, data dot plots dot bar, which this is going to be a vertical bar plot, which is what we have here, the, both the vertical and both uh, the horizontal bar plots. So with a data frame bar plots, group the values in each row bar side by side. So it's going to, this is a data frame in which we have created a data frame using P pandas. So we can call the data frame, which is DF, then DF, dot plot dot bar, which is going to give us uh, this, is going to group those bars side by side. So this is the first index, which is one. This is the second, which is two. This is the third. This is uh, the fourth, and it's going to place uh, the axis scale there. Then we can further pass this argument stack. We can say stack equals to true. Then in that case, uh, we are going to stack uh, create a stack bar plot. So for visualizing categorical data uh, with Seaborn, we can do that. First of all, we need, uh, we need to call the library. Then within the Seaborn, we are loading the, the, the tips data sets that came uh, this, with the Seaborn library. We are signing it into a new object called tips. Then we say SNS dot cat plot, which is going to, we pass in the data, then the X axis, we say it should be there. The Y axis, we say it should be total uh, bill. Yeah, we say it should be total bill. So when we should plot that, it's going to give us uh, this. We are, this is the Y, this is the X. So it's going to give us, uh, this is the plot we are going to get. So in the, the second examples here, we say SNS card plots, we are passing in the data sets, the X is there, the Y is total bill, then hue, which is the sex, then the kind, which is gonna be a swarm. So we want to create a uh, the swarm plot. So when we say hue is equals to sex, so it's going to color everything uh, by the sex so that we can differentiate which one is this, the male, which one is the uh, female. So for box plots, we just need to just change the kind to be box. So when we remove the kind and set it to box, it's going to generate uh, a box plot. For bar plots, the same thing, we need to change the kind to be bar. So once we remove this and we put bar, there is going to create the bar plots and it's, it's also going to place uh, the, the error bars. For scatter plots, what we need to add for scatter plots, we need to pass in, in this scatter plot, I am using uh, the penguins uh, data sets to create this scatter plot. So I assign it into an object called penguins. So we say sns.recplots from the Seaborn library, we say sns.recplots. So it's going to create a scatter plot. Then the X should be bill length. The Y should be flip, flipper, flipper length, then the data is the penguin. So when I run that line, we are going to get a scatter plots and it's going to put uh, the confidence intervals around uh, the bands. So, so the book also talk about uh, times is also good uh, for us to this, uh, do uh, the, the pair plot that is like a, a, a matrix showing uh, both uh, the categorical and also a plot for both uh, the continuous values. So what they did there in the book, they discussed, they used the SNS uh, dot pair plot from the Seaborn library. They used the function from the Seaborn, then they pass in uh, the data. Then in the X, the data kind, it should be kernel, kernel density estimates, then the plots, underscore, then they set the alpha, which controls the transparency, which is uh, should be 0 0.2. So if they do run that line, 
So if they run uh, the line, so it just display this. So it shows this are uh, flipper lens. So this is the relationship between uh, flipper lens and two continuous. So it's going to show us uh, the, the density plots and also uh, the scatter plots. I think this is very useful for exploratory uh, data analysis step is very useful. So it's going to display uh, this as the output. So this one is for the points uh, plots, SNS does cut plots, cut plots. So they were passing the data, then the X, they show it should be sex, for the Y, it should be survive, then the hue, which for the color, it should be class. So it's going to place the legend based on the class. Then the kind, I said it should be points. So when I run that, it's going to place the points. It's going to also put uh, the error bars uh, there. So this uh, is for the line plot. So we, they are still using uh, the NumPy library, which are already loaded. So SNS does set team then the style of the team should be what white uh, white grid. So in, in that case, they use uh, the NumPy library again to generate a, a random number of uh, 365 there. Then, then they say the PD dot date range, they set the date range to be uh, from this index from starting from one, First, I think this will be first of uh, January 2016. If I am, yeah, it's going to be first. The dead range will be range from first of January of 2016. The period should be 365, which is the entire year. Then the frequency should be set uh, to D. Then the data is they use a pandas data frame. Then they pass in the uh, the values which we created from this step then uh, the dates, then the columns should be A, B, C, and D, which is going to be what we'll place here in the legends. So when we now plot the plots using the SNS.line plots, then we pass in the data, then the part palettes, that is the look, which is tab 10, then, then the line width should be set uh, to 2.5. So when we run that line, is going to create uh, this uh, line plot. And this line plot, we can differentiate that and it's going to place uh, the legends here so that we can be able to differentiate which one is A, which one belongs to B, which one belongs to C, and also uh, which one uh, belongs to D. So are there any question up to now, I think the last, because I am almost at the last part, which is the facet grid for categorical variable. Any question or further contribution? Okay, so, so they also discussed that one way for us to uh, visualize data with many categorical variables is to use uh, the facet grids, whereby we are going to split uh, the visualization into uh, different uh, facets. So in this example, we are also using uh, the Seaborn, the same function, sns.catplots. So the x-axis should be species. Uh, the y axis should be build length. Then the hue, which is going to be the color, which should be sex. Then the column should be by the ice line. So it's going to facet the, this plot based on the different uh, ice line, then the kind of the plot, which is bar. When I set it to be bar, then the data is what penguin. So when we run that line, is going to output this, is going to be, this is for the Adele. This is still Adele, Gen 2 and Chinstrap. I don't know why it's not plotting them because this is still Adele, this is still Adele.
is it because I did I, Maya asks a question, is it because I did not drop the missing data? That is why it's not plotting Gen 2 and change trap. Um, I'm not sure. For the facets. Because I know this is Adele, this is still Adele, but we can't see Gen 2, we can't see change trap. But there are data points there. There are data points there. Yeah. Maybe something along, maybe I mean like you visualize me. I don't know. Um, the x-axis is the species, the y is build length, everything is there. Then the hue is sex. Uh, where is it? Where is the sex? Maybe it's typo somewhere. I'm suspecting this. I can't yeah, find maybe it. something. It doesn't have this variable. Maybe for those. I'm suspecting this hue. Maybe it's typo. What happens if you it, just remove it altogether and remove the hue? Okay. Something is wrong. I will check that script before I push it. So this, the last example here is just a box plot in which we just change the kind uh, to be box. Then the data is still, I think, penguins. The data is still penguins. So we are still using the SNS, uh, the SCAT plot function uh, from Seaborn. So when we run uh, that line, is going to just output uh, the box plots, the place uh, the box plots here. Uh, I think in the book, uh, in the book, they also talk about other Python visualization tools. Uh, they mention Alter, they, men they made mention of uh, Booker and also Plotly, which is other li important library in which they are also very useful for creating uh, visualization in Python. And they also talk about that for creating static graphic for prints or web, they do recommend using Matplotlib and libraries that builds on Matplotly like Pandas and Seaborn, for which are very easy for us to what improve because we can easily customize them to improve the look uh, of the uh, visualization. I think uh, that is all I have. Wow, thank you. Um, good point. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I mean, so this is just a question like to members, like which one do you normally use like while you are doing your stuff? Like, do you use Matplotlib or Pandas or Well, for me, I think I'm just like uh, Matplotlib. What you guys were you using like for Python? Matplotlib. <laughs> yeah, I use Matplotlib. It's clunky, but you know, I, I do a lot of looking up, copy pasting other people's examples. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. You do like you know. Yeah, also Mat, me Matplotlib also. <laughs> yeah, it's, I do okay. use a bit of Seaborn here and there, but. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for all of me. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. So, I think. Um, Who's next week? Sorry? Who's on next week? Oops, next week? Yeah. Um, I didn't even check. Uh, <laughs> Layla. No. No, it's not. <laughs> no way. <what>? Layla. <laughs> Great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> operations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So cool. basically, we we have Layla next week. Um, then we have week after we have time series, and for the time series, we don't have the volunteer yet. And I believe maybe before, um, after Layla, someone can volunteer for that. And then the last second to the last, Isabel, and for me would be the last one. Uh, 
to close the chapter. Wow, I start, I open the chapter uh, book and close the book. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. So, um, so yeah, I think we are good. And uh, if there is nothing, uh, we see Layla next week on data aggregation and grouping stuff. And by the way, like um, uh, you can see, like yes, uh, GG GG plot is good, and even Python people they are you know trying to create library that uh, you know uh, mimic the functionality of ggplot and you can see plot line and other stuff. It makes more sense than matplotlib. I'm sorry. Exactly. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was such a weird transition for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. And see you next week. <laughs> see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.